Hi guys, we're just going to look now at how to calculate a line of best fit using a least squares regression. And we'll be, this will be a sophisticated process because we will be calculating the line of best fit by hand. Um, here we've got uh, the same, uh, same data as we had before. It's, um, it's actually already now been put into order. It's been sorted according to the skull circumference, but it's the exact same data. And again, we've got our x, y, the products, the x squareds, the square of the skull circumference, and the square of y, the body height. And down at the bottom, we can see that we've got the sums of these respective values. Now, and I've taken this table, and I've already copied it over to Word, but I uh, didn't bother to keep every single row of cells because it's just a bit tedious, and so I had these dot, dot, dot to indicate that this is the complete set of data going on forever until the last pair of values. The um, formula for the line of best fit is uh, as follows. So let's insert an equation. And we've got y minus y bar is equal to the fraction of script Yes, better. S sub x y divided by goodness. We'll put parentheses around the part. Well, actually, maybe we don't even need to. Let's just stick on a superscript then of. Uh, Two. And that's your slope. Where what we're really doing here is putting the line into slope intercept form. And uh, you see what I mean. Lastly, we've got x minus x bar. I just want you to have a look at this. Uh, sorry if I said slope intercept, I meant point slope form. You might notice that the point in the point slope form is the mean of x and the mean of y. I hope this isn't any surprise to you because the line of best fit should go through the mean of all the x values, comma, all the y values, that particular set of coordinates. And so we can see in point slope form that that mean point is indeed a point on the line of best fit. And then this right here is the slope, the difference between uh, the ratio between the covariance and the standard deviation of x all squared. Now and it might be good then to replace this formula with something just a bit more explicit. So uh, let me copy it and let's have a look at it again, but this time we're going to make some replacements. We know that uh, the covariance SXY can be rewritten as Is the sum of all the x, y's minus the fraction involving the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's. And these are values, of course, that we've got nicely in our table already, divided by n, the number of values, which is still 40. This is all divided by the standard deviation of x, all squared. Now, you remember that the standard deviation of x is usually expressed as a square root. So if we're squaring that square root, of course, they cancel out. And so the only thing we've got in the bottom, then, is Sigma of x squared minus. 
Vamos. Refraction. And uh, in fact, this numerator right here is being taken to a power of 2. Okay. Um, in fact, and let me now also replace the x bar, the average, the mean of x, with what that represents, the sum of the x's divided by the number of values. So that could be rewritten then as the sum of, ooh, that's really big, of all the x values. Let's hope I can make that smaller. Yes, divided by n, and it's the same idea for mean of y except that it's now the y values. And uh, let's actually now make the substitution of all of these things on the next line. And so y minus, let's see, the sum of the y values, that's 6,712, right there. The n we know is 40. The sum of the x, y is 4, 3, 7, 8, 8, 1. But the sum of the x is times the sum of the y's here. Divided by 40. We know that the sum of the x values is still 2603. N is 40. Same thing over here. Stop it. 2603. 40. And then we've also got one more value to fill in, which is sigma of the x squared. So that was 169939. OK, well, now it's just a bit of uh, working things out on your calculator. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll leave you to do that. In fact, uh, you should be able to. Um, enter all of this into your calculator and eventually isolate for y. And you should get the exact same equation for the line of regression as Excel gives you when it performs, uh, when it adds a trend line uh, through your data points. And uh, I'll leave you here to, uh, to finish in the details. Um, you can check in a previous video on finding the correlation coefficient uh, what the actual equation of the line was on the graph, something along the lines of y equals 2.0001x plus, I don't remember, something like 34. But just check the um, value that you get when you resolve this with the value that came up on the graph in the video on calculating the correlation coefficient r. And when you've isolated y in this equation, and simplified the right-hand side, this should come out to exactly the same thing. So this is how you find a line of best fit by hand.